if the carving up of landscape is like the carving up of the of the human body, still expecting it to function naturally, do you think the next step in, in true ecological healing is community healing? Is that what you're saying? It's one of it's it's a very illuminating paradigm to look at things. Uh, yeah. when, especially when you include both human and non-human relationships as part of the community. But right. yeah, ultimately, right. the you know, damaged communities will, will create damaged soil. And, and yeah, yeah. You know. Like, like I'm just thinking there's this, there's this, there's, there's a conflict in the agricultural community between land ownership and land leasing, right? You don't need to re own the land you're regenerating. Right. I'm thinking back to even your sacred economics, you know, you have two chapters or as as much as I understand, two chapters, at least it with property and, and, and the idea of property and, and the ownership. And part of that chapter is the first one, at least, is dealing with the ownership uh, or the proper ownership of, of physical property, land. And, and, and there's tension there. You recognize the tension. Agriculturalists recognize the tension. The tension is true. But the issue with that tension is. You know, I, I have 400 acres. My neighbor has, you know, 8,000 acres. But if my cows go on his 8,000 acres, I, I could get sued and I lose my farm and I pay millions of dollars because they do $10 worth of damage. But that's just our current legal system. And so fences necessitate or, or fences are necessitated by that, that, that divergence, right, between life's consciousness, collective consciousness or communal consciousness and property ownership, Right. But I can't deny the idea of property ownership and let my animals everywhere. Then I end up in this situation that I've described. My point is, do, do you think in order to get true ecological healing, right, to piece back the Earth's body and its totality of, of, of true life operating and in, in interbeing natures and relationships and being that relationship, that human communities also need to heal, that these yes. lands start to get opened up? Yeah. So there's, there's Politically, a lot. socially and... Yeah. There's a lot of healing that we can do within the current system of property, but eventually as it goes to deeper levels, um, people will understand that, uh, you know, herbivores need to migrate. And in the interest of a deeper level of healing, they will, they will see the um, limitations of the current system of property. And so those yeah. may change. Uh, and, and, you know, already, like the situation that you spoke of specifically is different even today in some states in the U.S. that have exclosure laws rather than enclosure. Like, yeah, if your neighbor doesn't want his your cows on his property, he has to fence in his property. Those cows can go yeah. anywhere they want. And they're, you know, in yeah. India, that's the case, too. Like cows roam all over the place. And this eventually, you know, it suggests what actually everybody on some level knows is true is that we can't own land, that it's a fiction, that all ownership is, is a social agreement about who has what rights to do what at a certain place. And it's not like black and white, either you own it or you don't, because like historically, for example, in many parts of Europe, you could own land, but you couldn't sell it. So did you really own it? Or you could sell it, but only if every member of your extended family signed a contract, which could be hundreds of people, which meant wow. probably not. Or if you were a, a, an earl or a baron or a, a lord, the king might give you title to the land, but you don't actually own the land and you can't transfer that title. I mean, even today, like there's a vestige of that system in titles. Why is it called a title? It's because originally it was not actually property. And so like this kind of, what I'm saying is that there's like a, like a blurry boundary between a system where of ownership and a system of non-ownership. Like in communal societies, maybe there's not a concept of land ownership, yet the same family has farmed the same plot of land for 20 generations. So do they own it or not? And then the Gates Foundation comes in and assigns property rights. And next thing you know, they've mortgaged it to a bank. And that's considered progress. Yeah. But anyway, I, you know, I don't think that this is actually so much of an urgent issue. And it, it, I, I like to coin a phrase, um, political bypassing, where like very nitty gritty issues get 
uh, bypassed because we talk about, well, socialism, capitalism, communism, ownership. You know, okay, yeah, eventually these issues are going to come up uh, as, a, as a side effect of moving to a deeper level of the healing of the earth. But right now, they're kind of a diversion. And I think that there's a lot mm. of a lot of good urgent work to do within the current conception of property. Right. 